CC family. What a moment this is to share with you as God is expanding the vision of CRC. The church in the Val Triangle has officially broken ground on our own land for the first 1,000-seater facility. And soon, this will be developed into a 3,000-seater state-of-the-art facility. This is all for the glory and for the kingdom of our Lord Jesus Christ. We are yet to expand God's kingdom. I said we are yet to expand God's kingdom. Our purpose is to expand God's kingdom. So we are not settlers, we are not campers, we are movers and we are shakers. We are yet not to roll over, we are yet to take over. Come on, CRC. That's who we are. That's our DNA. We'll move and we'll get things moving wherever God has placed us. For term two, you are going to be blessed today with a powerful word from Pastor Art. Absolutely, Ange. On that note, we're going to stand up and praise the Lord. Let's go. Good morning, family. Great is the Lord and greatly to be praised. Are you ready to praise Him this morning? For He is good and His mercy endures forever. 
Hallelujah. Come on, church. Let's sing. Whenever I think about you, whenever my heart is set on you, my feet turn to dancing, because you are good with everything inside me, with every breath you gave me. Lord, I'll sing out your praises, because you are good. Hallelujah. We sing out for your glory. Our hearts cry out, open heaven in this place. Overflowing Cause you are good Oh, you are good You are good hey, Jesus, you are good I lift my eyes towards you I lay my life before you With no hesitation Cause you are good Hallelujah, we sing out, we sing out for your glory. Our hearts cry out, open heaven in this place overflowing. Cause you are good, hey, you are good, you are good, hey, Jesus, you are good.
on, that's why we are here today. Lift your hands to Him. Come on, we praise. Come on, let's lift our hands to Him. We praise the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. We pray. Come on, TBN, TBN, yet to one gospel, praise TV, Facebook, live, YouTube, CRC online, radio stations, people all over across the nations of the earth, we welcome you today. Come on, you're from Pretoria. Let's welcome all the people, the many millions watching with us today in the name of Jesus. Come on. And I want you to give yourself a big hand clap for being here today in the rain. I thought, listen, give yourself a big hand clap for showing up, for dressing up. Thousands and thousands of you making your way to church. We welcome you today here in Pretoria, in Bloemfontein, in Johannesburg, wherever you are today. God is going to bless you. God is going to touch you. And God is going to change your life. Come on. Give somebody a high five today and say, your best days are ahead of you. We believe it in Jesus' name. How many of you this morning believe that God has great plans for your life? Come on. Come on, say it this morning. Say, I am destined and I will not be denied. Say, I am destined and I cannot be denied. Say my best days are ahead of me and my life will be for the praise of His glory. In the name of Jesus Christ, give the Lord one more praise today, come on. In the name of Jesus, come on, give Him praise, hallelujah. Oh come on, it's good that you are here today. There's a bicycle race and you still made your way to church uh, uh, in spite of all of that, it's amazing. To see your commitment, to see so many thousands here today. So take your your, your seats, open your Bibles, uh, Philippians chapter 4. Let's get our sound right, please. Philippians chapter 4. And I want to read verse 12 and 13. Well-known scripture, the Apostle Paul. We want to talk about his life. I'm starting a new series today. Destined not to be denied. Yeah, you can say Amen. And, 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 and I say to hell with the devil, okay? <laughs> and I say, Jesus said, I will build my church and the gates of hell will not prevail. And I say, no weapon formed against you shall prosper and every tongue risen against you in judgment, God himself will condemn. I say, God says, vengeance is mine. I will repay. Philippians chapter 4, verse 12, the Bible says, I know how to be abased. The Apostle Paul talking. The word abased means I know how to be dishonored, how to be degraded, how to be demeaned, how to be belittled, and how to be diminished. So he says, I've known how to be put down by people and put down by life. Now listen to me. Sometimes life will do that. Sometimes people will try to do that. He says, I also know how to abound, how to experience the abundant blessing of God. God's blessing, God's favor, God's anointing. He says, everywhere in all, in all things I've learned, both to be full and hungry, both to abound and to suffer need. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Say amen today. The person translation says, I know what it means to lack. I know what it means to experience overwhelming abundance. 
For I'm trained in the secret of overcoming all things. Whether in fullness or hunger. And I find the strength of Christ's explosive power infuses me to conquer every difficulty. I want to tell you, no matter what hell throws against you, you are going to be okay because greater is He that is in you than he that is in the world. Say Amen today. And when I say it to you today, if God predestined it for you, you can. Through Christ who gives you the strength. If God meant it for you, you can. By the power of the Holy Ghost. If God said it, that settles it in Jesus' Name. If it's God's will for your life, you can do it by the power and the anointing of God. No matter what the odds are against you, no matter who the haters are, no matter who the belittlers are, no matter the opposition, no matter the devil, if God blessed you, you cannot be cursed. If God meant for you to be the head, you will not be the tail. You will be above only and you will not be beneath. How? By the power of Christ who lives on the inside of you. Say Amen. Come on. So maybe life has knocked you down. But my brother, you are not going to stay down. You are going to get up. I said you are going to get up by the power of the Holy Ghost. It's not done until you decide it's done. It's not over until you wave the white flag and you say it's done. Listen, you never tap out in this race called life. You never quit on the dream and the destiny and the promise God has for you. There's somebody that lives on the inside of you. And Paul says, I've been degraded. I've been belittled. I've been put down. I've had nothing but Christ. I've learned the secret of overcoming everything that life throws against me by the infusing power of Christ on the inside. Say Amen. Hallelujah. So God has a destiny for each one of us. The Bible's very clear about that. And this destiny God has for you is something you have to pursue. It's not just going to fall into your lap. God will allow storms, trials, tribulations, opposition, bitterness, unforgiveness, people, the devil in hell, to derail you from your assignment in life. You have to stay true to the course. Ephesians 1 verse 11, the Bible says, Him, him also we have obtained an inheritance, being predestined according to the purpose of Him who works all things according to the counsel of His will. Now, you are not here by accident. You are by God's design. God planned for you to be alive at this hour. God placed you on this earth. You are not a second-rate citizen of heaven. You are a child of God. You are the only one that is you. You have your DNA, your personality, your calling, and a destiny that God predetermined before the foundations of the earth. Can you say amen today? So you're not just going to float through life and be a nobody and uh, look at everybody else going ahead in life and not fulfill your dream. If your dream is to be a doctor, then you go for it. Even if you never got the selection, then you go study BSc until you get the selection. You don't quit on your dream. Even if you have to take a little detour of three years, you don't give up. You stay true to the destiny that God has for you. You should not negotiate or renegotiate the plan that God has for you because the promises of God are yea and amen. So when obstacles come, op opposition comes, when people try to derail you from your destiny, you don't take a, si a, a step back. Maybe you have to take a, a, a step sideways but it may take a little bit longer, Joseph. We'll talk about it next year, uh, next week. But you are going to reach the palace. You are going to reach your destiny in God's perfect timing. Say amen in Jesus' name. Ephesians 2.10 says, We are His workmanship, His handiwork. Created in Christ Jesus for good works, which God prepared beforehand that we should walk in them. So each and every one of us have, has a blueprint. You are not alive by accident. To be a teacher, a lawyer, a doctor, an engineer, whatever it is, God predestined you to be alive at this hour and at this time. So your attitude should be, if I am destined for it, I will not be denied. Amen. Because winners don't quit and quitters don't win. Come on, give the Lord a praise. Hallelujah.
No, come on, give the Lord a praise. Come on. I know it's cold out there, but it's not cold in here. Let's give the Lord a praise. Come on in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Let's give the Lord a praise. Give Him a bit of a praise. Hallelujah. So if God predestined it for me, make up your mind today and say, I can. Now I said, everybody say, I can. Through Christ, who gives me the strength. Romans 8, 28, the Bible says, we know all things work together for good to those who love God, to those who are called according to His purpose. The good, the bad, and the ugly. If you do not lose yourself, we'll work together for good. And God's purpose for your life will come to pass. Say amen. amen. Jeremiah 29 verse 11, God says, For I know the thoughts I think toward you, says the Lord. Thoughts of peace and not of evil to give you a future and a hope. Uh, say it this morning, please. Say, I have a future. Say it. Say, I have a great future. Say it. I, I didn't say the journey was going to be easy. We're going to talk about the journey now if, if we get the sound right eventually. Uh, I, I'm talking about you, you need to make up your mind that God's destiny for you is one of significance. And it's one of greatness. God never made any of His people to be insignificant. Not if you create it in the image and the likeness of God. You were planned by God for this time. You have a divine destiny and you now have a choice. Whether you will embrace your destiny, believe in a God of destiny, and whether you will pursue God's plan for your life, which is the will of God. For the glory of God. So you need to acquire the desire to pursue your destiny. A lot of people that sit around and wait for things to happen. Now Paul says, I can do all things. And, and I, I, I'm going to show you the life of Paul, how Paul pursues the destiny of God, but at a cost. I mean, there were many times for him to tap out. Our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, also had opportunities to tap out. Think about it. In three years, 11 attempts were made on his life to kill him. The religious leaders hated him so much, they wanted to silence him at any cost. But they could not because his time had not come. Then just before he goes to the cross, he's in the Garden of Gethsemane. And the Bible says he sweats great drops of blood. He's in agony and he, he, he prays to his father. He says, Father, let this cup pass from me. Nevertheless, not my will be done, but thy will be done. I mean, people talk about Jesus as if it was this easy journey that he had. It wasn't. As a matter of fact, he left his deity. He who is God, who created the heavens and the earth, steps out of heaven, becomes a baby born in a manger, lives as a man, puts on human flesh, goes through all the trials and the tribulations you and I will face. God in a human form, Emmanuel. God with us. Sinless Yet he experienced rejection, he experienced betrayal, he experienced everything that you can experience as a human. The suffering, the opposition, the turmoil, the agony, hunger at times, yes. But he stayed true to his call and to his assignment, which was what? To be the Savior of the world. And the Bible says, he humbled himself to the point of becoming obedient to death. He was destined by His Father to go to the cross. That was His destiny, predetermined before the foundations of the earth. That's your Lord and Savior. That's our example. And that didn't just fall into His lap. He had to pursue His Father's will. He had to persevere. And then in the Garden of Gethsemane, when He says to the disciples, watch and pray lest you enter into temptation. What temptation is He talking about? The temptation to tap out or quit which he never did. I mean, three times he prays to God and he says, let this cup pass from me. Father, I don't want to go to the cross. I know it's my destiny. I don't want to become sin, but I know it's my destiny. Father, is there another way? And the father never answered him. He cries out to God three times. 
I'm not a doctor, but there are many doctors here. I don't know in what kind of emotional agony and trauma you must be to sweat great drops of blood. What pressure must be on your heart or on, I don't know how it happens, Norman, that, that, that blood actually hits out on your forehead and an angel comes to strengthen him. So when we talk about destiny and we talk about pursuing the things God has for us, we're not talking about this little hip, hip, hurrah, little life where things just happen and things fall in your lap. Nobody has ever achieved significance or done anything great for God without a journey, listen, of hardship and suffering and opposition. Persevering, showing up every day, being the best version of yourself, acquiring the attitude, no matter what life throws against me, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. I can and I will. I am not gonna abandon my calling. I'm not gonna abandon my destiny because if God has destined it for me, I will not be denied. Come on, if that's you today, give the Lord a praise today in this place in the name of Jesus, hallelujah. Come on, say, I have been destined, say it. And I will not be denied, say it. So destiny is, is choice, it's not chance. Life is a series of choices. Choices we make every day. Choices that determine our character. Now we're talking about attitude, yeah. Because it's easy to be negative, but we are called to be positive. We are called to have faith. We are called to have a resilient attitude. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Choices determine our character. Choices determine our speech. Choices determine our relationships. The direction we take. Our destiny and ultimately eternity. I put before you life and death, blessing and cursing. Choose life, God says in Deuteronomy chapter 30. Andre Fenter. Many of you know him, some of the younger people may not know him. A great friend of mine, been in our church forever, who played 66 tests for South Africa, landed in a wheelchair. The most unlikely person to land in a wheelchair, he was Mr. Fitness of South African Rugby. Was attacked by a little virus that left him paralyzed in a wheelchair. He wrote the following, he was asked to write something motivational for the Western Province team and I said to him, Andre, hey, uh, 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 I said, now you're motivating the Western province, but you're of Cheetah. What are you doing? No, my son is now playing for the Western province. I said, okay, I get that. But uh, in any case, so he showed me what he wrote to the team about attitude. And, and it's, it's okay if you're up and about all the time to talk about attitude. But listen, if life has given you a, a, a raw deal, if life has given you an unexpected curveball, and that which was the strongest thing in your life is suddenly taken away from you and you remain positive and you pursue your destiny, I think we can listen to people like that that never gave up, that never quit, but that became more determined to make a difference in this world using what he still has to give to people. So he writes, well, I don't want to say to the, to the Cape Tonians, but uh, he writes this and he says, it is your attitude at the beginning of a task more than anything else that will determine your success or failure. It is your attitude. I remember when he phoned me and he, and he, and he said to me, he said to me, Pastor, I, 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 past I stood in the shower and I, and I felt uh, my leg getting a little bit lame. I said to him, Andre, it's nothing. Because we always believe the best, right? So he goes and they can't find anything wrong. Two weeks later, he phones me and he says, I'm in a hospital. I can't move both my legs. I'm paralyzed. This is what we're talking about many, many years ago. His girl, Annabelle, was, I think she wasn't even born then. Now she's a beautiful athlete. Um, and that family serves God for the glory of God in spite of the setback that they had. Motivates people. Come on, that's true. Come on, that's true victory. When, when life tries to knock you down, and even though you sit in a wheelchair, you never sit down on the inside. You stand up on the inside. So I think we can listen and not play this victim game that so many people are playing in South Africa. He says that your attitude toward life, which will determine life's attitude towards you. Life plays no favorites. 
You control, you control your attitude, no one else. You decide whether you're positive or negative. Before you develop a, can develop a good attitude, you have to act as if you have a good attitude. Actions trigger feelings just as feelings trigger actions. Before a person can achieve this kind of result he wants, you must first become that person. You must think. You must walk. You must talk. You must conduct yourself in all affairs as the person you wish to become. I can give scriptures for all of these kind of things. Um, you have to be your tomorrow before you will be in your tomorrow. So you can't lie in bed till 10 o'clock in the morning and think things are going to change tomorrow. You have to be the wife you want to be before you get married. Because you're not going to change once you get married, right? You have to be the person you want to be. Then you will see what God wants for you. So you first work on yourself as a student. You don't hang around with turkeys if God's calling you to be an eagle. You don't hang around with gossipers if God's calling you to be a world shaker. He says, treat everybody as the most important person in the world and watch how your life changes. Attitudes are based on assumptions. In order to change attitudes, one must first change one's assumptions. Develop the attitude that there are more reasons why you should su succeed than reasons why you should fail. When you are faced with a problem, adopt the attitude that you can and you will resolve it. Amen. We call problems opportunities. We become what we think about, so control your thoughts and you will control your life. Radiate your attitude with confidence. Radiate well-being to others, say somebody that sits in a wheelchair. Of a person who knows where he is going, you will then find good things happening to you right away. So yes, yeah, success or failure or any undertaking is caused more by mental attitudes than by mental capacity. It's not what happens to you in life that is important, it's how you handle it. Come on, say amen. Let's give him a hand clap for, for, for some... No, come on, man, give him a hand clap. Think where you would be if you sat in that situation. So Paul the Apostle says in Scripture, basically the same. Second Corinthians chapter 4, verse 1, he says, Since God has so generously led us in on what He is doing, we're not about to throw up our hands and walk off the job just we, because we run into occasional trouble. Verse 8 says, As it is, there is not much chance of that. Meaning what? I'm not going to quit. I'm not going to put my tail between my legs. Oh, come on, man, in the name of Jesus Christ. You lose your job, you go find another job. You go through a, a, a traumatic experience, you dust yourself off, weeping endures for a moment, but joy comes in the morning. But you don't go dig a hole and climb in the hole and throw dust over yourself because God's not finished with you. Come on. God has a destiny for you and you have to make up your mind, I cannot be denied in Jesus' name. It says, we've been surrounded and battered by trouble, but we're not demoralized. Amen. Keep the faith. When the storms of life come, don't be moved by the storms. Keep the faith. We're not sure what to do, but we know God knows what to do. Hallelujah. It's the source of wisdom. We've been spiritually ter terrorized, but God hasn't left our side. We've been thrown down, but we've not been broken. Verse 13 says, Since we have the same spirit of faith according to what was written, I believe, therefore I spoke. We also believe, and therefore do we speak. We, we, we don't speak our problems. We declare the future God has for us. We call things that be not as though they were. We talk about the blessing. We talk about the breakthrough. We talk about the favor. We don't talk about what we face. We talk about the promises of God. Come on. Life and death is in the power of the tongue. We speak to the future. I can and I will do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Come on. When I get knocked down, I'm going to get back up again 
in the name of Jesus Christ. Listen, my brother and my sister, it's not what other people say about you that matters. It's what you say about yourself and it's what you believe about yourself that really matters in Jesus' name. So he says in, in 2 Corinthians 4 verse 16, Therefore we do not lose heart, verse 17, for our light affliction, which is but for a moment. Tough times don't last, tough people do. You keep on, keeping on, on the path that God has for you. Because we don't look at the things which are seen, but at the things that are not seen. For the things which are seen are temporary, but the things which are not seen are eternal. So yes, my friend, your attitude has so much to do with seeing God's destiny unfold in your life. There will always be opposition to your mission. There will always be storms. There will always be the doubters and the belittlers. Like David, his father belittled him, his brothers belittled him, King Saul belittled him, but David knew who he was. I've slain the lion, I've slain the bear. This uncircumcised Philistine will be like one of them. He never allowed his brother's opinion to define him. Joseph never allowed his brother's jealousy to derail him from his destiny. He stayed true to his God, so God protected him in the pit, in the pot, in the prison. And Joseph, in the time of God, landed in the palace to fulfill the purpose of God. Listen, if it's God's will for you, you cannot be denied. I'll say it to you again and again. You may have had one loss, but that loss is not final. You can get up from that, you can learn from that, and you can go on stronger and keep your eyes on the goal, on the promise of God, in the name of Jesus, and live with that attitude. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me, living reliant and dependent on the grace of God. So it, it, it really doesn't matter what people say. Jesus in Mark 9, 23 says, if you can believe, all things are possible to them that believe. That's Jesus talking, if you can believe. So ultimately, it's what you truly believe about yourself. It's what you truly believe about your destiny. It's about your trust in the infusing power of Christ who lives on the inside of you. You making up your mind that I will be the best version of myself every day. Not sometimes, every day. Whether I'm on my feet or a wheelchair, I'm going to be the best version of myself. I'm going to give it a go in Jesus' name. Amen. I'm going to put on a happy face even when I don't feel happy. I'm going to encourage somebody else even if I need encouragement. But I'm not going to lie down. I'm not going to die before my time. God has destined something for me and I will not be denied. Come on, man, in Jesus' name. So it's your unwillingness to find excuses and to blame others that will enable you to run this race with strength and endurance. It's your resilience, your stick with it ability, your bounce back attitude, your perseverance, your endurance that will cause you to outlast your enemies and those who stand against you. You stay true to the cause. You run your race. You keep your eyes on Jesus Christ, the one who predetermined, predestined great things for your life. And God will have the final say. Say amen today in Jesus' name. So for true winners, for champions in life, or let me say for those who fulfill destiny, there is no easy path. Now, I'm not expecting amens for this, but we need to hear this, especially young people, because everything is like overnight. No, there's no easy path. The greater the destiny, the greater the opposition. You, you pray God for God, you want to do great things for God, and well, with great calling comes great trial and tribulation. So there's no easy path. There's no shortcut. Amen. You can sign one contract and it's going to work for two or three years. And then you've spent all your money and made debt. Then you're in trouble. There's no quick... Sometimes I, I read these books. No, I don't read them. I see the title and I think I'm not going to read it because I've been in the ministry 38 years now. Uh, married 37 years, and um, there's no quick steps to success. 
This is not a two-step dance. Or three-step. It's called a journey. Yeah, I knew I wasn't going to get Amos. I'm getting one little uh, so flow on the club or so errands. Yeah, nee, want ons wil ons nou alles nou hee. Nou. Caleb is 85 jaar oud. En uh, ten spuite van al die terugsla, het hy nog steeds die rechte gesintheid gehad. En hy sê, as my strength, strength was then for war, so still is my strength this day. He stayed strong. My brother, you want to fulfill God's plan for your life, you have to stay strong on the inside. You have to stay strong in, in the good times and in the bad times. In the highs, in the lows, like Paul says. When you feel down, you have to stay focused on Christ on the inside who strengthens you. If you're on a high, don't forget, it's Christ who gives you the strength. Amen. Come on, say amen. So, uh, yes, number four, nothing is going to fall in your lap. Uh, I don't need, don't want to say these things because I'm naughty now, but um, no, let me not say it. Um, there's no miracle money that's just going <laughs> to... That's just going to fall into your bank account. A miracle money that's just going to show up in your pocket. It's nonsense. Bible says he that doesn't work doesn't eat. You're going to have to work for it. I said you're going to have to work for it. You're going to have to work for it. You're going to have to do what God called you to do and be faithful through your 20s. Faithful through your 30s, 40s, 50s, 60s, 70s, 80s. And work till the day you die. So those of you that have retirement plans, please get rid of it. You don't need to retire, you need to refire. Get some destiny back, get some purpose back in your heart in the name of Jesus. Your best days are ahead of you. I said your best days are ahead of you. 60, 70, 80, your best days are ahead of you. I'm telling you in Jesus' name. So Paul the Apostle, he's called to preach the gospel to the Gentiles. We know the story, his conversion. Then the Ananias comes to him and he says to me, God says, I've chosen him to be a light, a preacher and an apostle to the Gentiles and to be my name before kings. And I'm going to show him how great things he will suffer for my name's sake. So uh, the journey wasn't one of plain sailing, which it never is for anybody. Anybody that builds a business will tell you, it's not easy. Yes, we say by the grace of God, it's easy, but it's not easy. You have to get out there. You have to be strong when you feel weak. You have to put one foot in front of the other foot. You have to live reliant upon the grace of God every day of your life and make up your mind. I have been destined by God, therefore I will not be denied in the name of Jesus. You will not quit. I said you will not quit in the low times. You will not quit when you are abased. And you will not become arrogant when you abound. You will stay true to the call of Christ and to the journey that God has for you. So 2 Corinthians 11, 22, he says, Are they not Hebrews? So am I. Now he has to defend his apostleship. Are they not Israelites? So am I. Are they not seed of Abraham? So am I. Are they not ministers of Christ? I speak as a fool because Paul didn't like to gloat. But now people are attacking him and he has to defend his apostleship. And he says, I am more. In labors more often... Abundant in stripes above measure. You say, Lord, call me like Paul. You better read the journey of Paul. I want to be Elijah. Read the journey of Elijah. You just read the fire that comes down from heaven, not how Elijah had to go hide in a cave. In prisons more frequent, in deaths, more than the Jews five times received 40 stripes minus one. He was beaten five times with 39 stripes. I mean, I wonder what this man's body looked like. Three times I was beaten with rods. Once I was stoned. Not like some of you on, on, on Friday night. Three 
times I was shipwrecked, man of faith. <laughs> Some people say, you know, if you believe God, you'll never have a hard day in your life. No, you need faith because you will have many hard days in your life. That's why you need faith. You need faith because there will be many storms. That's why you need faith. Faith isn't the, the, the guarantee that nothing is going to go wrong. Faith is the, the confidence, the reliance you have on God that you're not going to give up in the journey of life when things go wrong, when opposition shows up. So this is Paul going through challenge upon challenge. He says in journeys often, in perils of water, perils of robbers. He lived in South Africa. He couldn't stop at a red robot at night. Was too dangerous. He didn't have to fly and go live in Canada. He stayed in South Africa in danger of robbers. Some of you have been robbed. <laughs> Come on, man. Some of you have been robbed. Pastor Andre, they came into his garage at gunpoint and put a gun against him and robbed him. Uh, uh, other people sitting here today as well. And I, I say to people, okay, thank God you're still alive. Give God the glory because you're not bound by the spirit of fear. God protected you. They took your watch and they took your wallet and that's okay. But that's not the end of your journey. You don't give up because of these challenges that we have in South Africa. It says, in perils, in dangers of my own countrymen, in dangers of the Gentiles, dangers in the city, dangers in the wilderness, dangers in the sea, dangers among the brethren, false brethren, in weariness and toil, sleeplessness often, in hunger and thirst. Does this sound like a great journey? No, it's one of pressure. Pressure. Not la la land. Pressure. You do things for God, there's pressure. And he goes through this list. Listen, television audience, God loves you. There's a journey ahead of you. And I tell you what, you will prevail if you live uh, rooted in the grace of God and the love of God. God bless you in Jesus' name. Amen. So uh, we, we preach these things and we talk about these things sometimes like there are no challenges. Listen, there's a challenge every day of your life. Every day you get up, if you have a destiny, there's a challenge. Every day that you get up, there's something you have to overcome. But you have to see the end. You have to be a person of vision. You have to make up your mind before hell shows up that you are not a quitter, that you are not a giver in. Come on. That you are a keeper on, keeping on, reliant upon the grace of Jesus Christ upon your life. Come on, say amen. He says in weariness often, anybody ever been tired? I'll tell you, there were times I've been as tired as a dog and then I still have to get up and preach and the anointing of God comes upon me. Yes, thank you. Not shabba la 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 la. Sometimes you wait upon the Lord and you're still tired because you live in a body. Well, those of you that are never tired obviously don't have any pressure. It's like I watch people say, oh, I've just learned to rest in the Lord. I say, my brother, I'm also resting in the Lord, but... Am I talking to somebody here today? In sleeplessness often, there were no sleeping tablets. In hunger and thirst, in fasting, in cold and nakedness, beside the other things which comes upon me daily, my deep concern for all the churches. Who is weak and am I not weak? Who is made to stumble? And I do not burn with indignation. Second Corinthians 12, I close. He says, lest, now he goes a chapter further. And he's explaining how he handled whatever he went through. Back to Philippians chapter 4. And he says in Second Corinthians 12, he says, lest I should be exalted above measure by the abundance of revelation. A thorn in the flesh was given to me. A messenger of Satan. It tells you what the thorn in the flesh was. A demonic principality that opposed him wherever he went to buffet me lest I be exalted above measure concerning this thing I pleaded with the Lord three times that it might depart from me and he said and he said to me my grace is sufficient for you my word 
I wish we had the answers. I said to somebody that's praying for the sick all the time, I said, listen, we pray for the sick, but don't embarrass them, number one. And number two, um, I don't know why sometimes things happen and things don't happen. And sometimes it's like God says to a person, my grace is sufficient for you. For my strength is perfected in your weakness. And, and if we think we've got it all figured out and we have this perfect little picture, we are wrong. What we need is a perfect picture of God, the love of God, and, and, and the purpose of God for our lives. And then no matter what, that we stay anchored in our destiny, which ultimately is to get into heaven, but we are not saved just to get into heaven. We are saved to live a life for God while we are here. And then no matter what happens, no matter what comes against you, no matter what you face, if you have to go weep, then go weep. And if you mourn, you mourn, but you don't give up. You live reliant and dependent on the grace of God. You lose your job, you lose your wife, you lose a child. It's traumatic, it, it's hurtful, it's painful, and we don't have the answers, but I'll tell you, whether you are down, whether you're up, whether life knocks you to the ground and God lifts you up, you can live a strong life every day of your life, living reliant and dependent upon the grace of God and upon the infusing power of Christ who lives on the inside. Come on, in the name of Jesus, take hope this morning. No matter who you are, no matter what you are facing, if God destined for you, you make up your mind, I will not be denied. I'm gonna keep my eyes on Christ and I'm gonna keep on keeping on and I'm gonna get back on my feet and I'm gonna believe God again. And when I am weak, then I am strong for God's grace is sufficient for me in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. You know, Andre came to visit me the other day and he, and he bride, because he's not somebody that's going to come and he doesn't want to do the bride. I say, man, alsjeblieft, man, jy is my gas. Hy is nie, pastoor, ek braai. Now, I don't, I mean, I love him. He's my friend. And I don't mean to, and I asked his permission to, to talk about him today. But, um, to see somebody like that with a positive spirit and doing business like he did while he had two, could run around on his two legs and now he's involved encouraging other people, etc. There's an overcoming attitude, my brother. There's a victorious mindset that says, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. No matter what happened to me, this that has happened to me, I never expected. But I've learned the art of overcoming all things, living reliant upon the infusing power of Christ who lives on the inside of me. Come on. I don't know what life has thrown your way, but today you have to make up your mind to get back up on the inside. And no matter how weak you are, to put your faith and your hope in Christ and to say, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. If God meant it for me, I'm going to do it for the glory of God. Like Paul the Apostle who says, I have run the race, I have kept the faith. To King Agrippa he said, I was not disobedient to the heavenly vision. I'll tell you my friend, if God meant it for you, it will be no devil, no hell, no curse, no spell. Now witchcraft can stop what God has planned for you. You keep your eyes on Jesus Christ and you run stronger every day, knowing that God holds you in the palm of His hand and He's the one who will make a way even where there seems to be no way. If you receive the word this morning, come on, get to your feet and give the Lord a praise. I've got to fly away to glory. Hallelujah, come on, give Him a praise. Give Him a praise today. Come on, give Him a praise. Because in Him we live and move and have our being. Give Him a praise. God is good. God will do you right. God will never fail you. Maybe things don't always turn out the way we plan, but it will always turn out for our, for our benefit. All things work together for the good of those who love God, who are called according to His purpose. All things work together for good to those who love God, who are called according to His purpose. Come on, God loves you. God is for you. And if God is for you, who can be against you? Come on, give Him a praise as we worship Him in Jesus' name.
Father, we just want to honor you. You have been a good God to us. You've loved us so much that you gave your only begotten son to die for us on the cross. We are so amazed by the love that you have for us that you came to save so you can give your life as a ransom to us. Father, we just want to honor you for what you have done in our life, for what you are currently presently doing in our life, and what you are still going to do in our life. We want to declare this morning, Father, that nothing will separate from us, from you. Nothing will separate us from the love that you have for us. No principalities, no death, no height, no devil, no kingdom of darkness will separate us from, from you. Father, we just want to honor you this morning for you who, who you are in Jesus' mighty name. Lord, we thank you for the great message this morning. Family, this was a great message. Destined, but not to be denied. But I want to say, say the following to you. Because it's easy to come every single Sunday and we clap the hands, we worship, the music is good. And we, we get into this groove of become so religious. And every single Sunday becomes the same Sunday. But there is no activation. Then the Monday stays, the same, stays, stays exactly the same. The week stays the same. And we're waiting for the worship again. We're waiting for intercession again. We're waiting for Wednesday to come. And we're waiting to meet the people. We're waiting after church. We take profile pictures and put on Facebook. Then it becomes a routine. And when that becomes a routine, it becomes religious. And then the enemy will finish all of us. Because when we come, we don't sense the presence of God and what God wants to do. So I don't want this thing to become just a message that pastor spent the whole week preparing this message. Distance for greatness. Distance to prosper. And all these things that God has danced in us will never be denied to us. So this morning, the first thing that we, we want to give to you is Jesus Christ. The first thing, Jesus Christ. Because you see, if you don't have him, you can confidently quote the scripture and declare the scripture and say, all, by all things, I'll do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Because how will he be able to strengthen you if it's not your Lord, your, Nesov, your Savior? How will he do this thing? This is what I'm talking about. From the beginning of time, it's been the heart of God to bless us, to increase us, to multiply us. In the Old Testament, God wanted, to, to be, wanted us to be the men and women of God of greatness. He said in the book of Isaiah, it says, Arise and shine, for your light has come. That light was Jesus Christ. Up until you can arise, up until you can do something and receive that light, the breath of God in your life, there are certain things that will not come. Then he says, when that light comes, the glory of God will manifest in your life. And the Bible says, look around. They will gather together. They will come to you. Because of that light, you will, your heart will swell with joy. Because of that light, the wealth of the Gentiles, they will come to you. Because of that light, the kings will come. The people will come from far to come. But if you don't have that light, that Jesus Christ, there are certain things that will never manifest in your life. That's the first thing we want to give you. We want to give you Jesus Christ. Then I'm going to pray for the following people. Because we quote the scripture, Romans 8, 28, that all things work together for those who are called. But the last verse says, those who are called for what? For the purpose of God. In those spheres of influence. As a business, man. For the purpose of God. What is the purpose of God? God wants to manifest through your fears of influence. In other words, in the spheres where you're operating, as a soccer player, as a family, as a businessman, you have to manifest the glory of God in that sphere. So if you've not been able to manifest the glory of God 
in that sphere so the people can see the goodness of God in your sphere of influence. It means spiritually, you've been backslidden even if you're born again. There's an area that you've been backslidden because God promotes you for his kingdom to manifest. God gives you a business to manifest his kingdom. If his kingdom has not been manifesting in the spheres where you're operating, you've been backslidden in what you're supposed to be doing. Because God has called us to manifest. That is why the Bible says, creation is waiting eagerly in anticipation for the manifestation of the sons of God. Where? In business. When the sons of God cannot manifest themselves, it means the glory of the Lord will never be manifest. Then the people will not to get to know God in their life. I want to pray for you. If you are sitting at that level where you've never become an ambassador, at school you've never become an ambassador, your promotion has not been about the kingdom of God. Your increase and multiplication has never been about the kingdom of God. I want to pray for you. Those two areas, you don't know Jesus Christ. You want God to come into your life. Because you see the Bible says, there's a spirit of God in man. Ruach, the breath of life of God. And it is that spirit that will give men knowledge and understanding. The other translation says, that spirit will make you intellect. That's what we want to activate. It's already in you. But when you receive him, and he comes in you, and you study his word, that's what you are activating. Then when the Bible says the nations will come running to you, it is because you are carrying something so supernatural that the people will come only to your practice. The people will only come to your motivational, inspiration talks. They will not go the other way else because there is something totally different. Because you see, when you carry God in your life, you become different. You speak different. So every eye closed. In Pretoria, on YouTube, no one moving. The believers are praying. I want to introduce you to this kingdom of God that we're talking about. Because he came to give his life so that we can become powerhouses to manifest his glory so that people they can see. And he says, when this spirit come upon you, People will come from afar. They will look for you. Because we have something that most people, they don't have. Up until you can have Jesus Christ in your life as your Lord and your Savior. And literally you can, you can, you can push this thing and study and meditate on His word and understand the rules of engagement. How this kingdom of God operates, how it works. And what is that that God is expecting from you. You will be shoulder above the rest. You'll be totally different from everybody else. When the people see you walking, it's like there's some magnet, there's favor of God, there's unusual access, unusual kindness towards you because you are carrying something so powerful and strong that nobody else has. This is that Jesus Christ we want to give it to you. So if this morning, if you fall in those two categories, I want you to raise your hand and say, Muruti, Pastor, I'm coming back. This is what I want to do. I want to raise your hands right now. And say, so I want to pray. I will lead you in Jesus' mighty name. Come on, family. In Jesus' mighty name. Raise your hands by the power of the Holy Ghost. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you. In the name of Jesus Christ. Is there anyone else? Say, so God, I want to move into that dimension. Pastor, can you read? Can you, can, you, can, you, can you help me? Can you lead me? I want to move at that level that nobody else has ever taught me. I want you to raise your hand in Jesus' mighty name. Amen and amen. Family, I'm going to ask you if you've raised your hand or you did not you raise your hand and you know you have to be here. I'm going to ask you to take everything that you have that you brought to church. Come and meet the leaders here at the altar in the name of Jesus Christ. Come on, family. Don't go back home. Don't go back home without giving God the opportunity and the chance. In the name of Jesus Christ. Come on, family. He's waiting. He's waiting. He's waiting. He's waiting. He's waiting. He's waiting. This is what he wants to deposit in your life. This is what he wants to give to you. But you have to take a step. You have to arise. You have to arise. 
in the name of Jesus. Come on. Familiar slaves, people are coming. Give him your heart today. Come home. Come home to the Father. Come home. Your heart is what he's after. Surrender all. Give him your heart today. Amen. And amen. Family. I'm speaking to the people here in front. There's a party going on in heaven right now. There's a party going on in heaven right now. New destiny, new things will start happening in your life. You have to believe it and you will see what God will do. And then those who are recommitting their life, the new ones, please don't forget today's date. Is the what, the seventh? Yeah, it is the seventh of April. You must remember this time, the 7th of April, 9.50, in CRC Pretoria. I've prayed this prayer. So family, I want you to stretch forth your hands and help them pray. The people here in front, put your, your hand in your heart and repeat after me. Say, Father, I thank you for the gift of life. This morning, in the name of Jesus Christ, I give my life unto your hands. I declare today that you are my Lord and my Savior, that all my sins have been forgiven. I believe with all my heart that you've died for me in Jesus' mighty name. Amen and amen. Come on! In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. So family, this is what we're going to do. We're going to ask you to turn to your left. Go with Pastor Elzan. They will pray with you. When they finish praying with you, they will bring you right back into, into the service. In Jesus' name. Come on, family. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Amen and amen. Family, we can take your seat as we watch this week's announcement. True spirituality that is pure in the eyes of our Father God is to make a difference in the lives of the orphans and the widows in their troubles and to refuse to be corrupted by the world's values. We hold the keys to lift those around us. We ought to love people and walk with them until they see full restoration in their lives. In our lost and decaying world, pain is in much supply making it our duty to stand with the afflicted and bring Jesus to the hurting. Our CRC Cares and Women Ministries have been going into our communities, making a difference as we stand against gender-based violence. We've distributed 1,475 CRC Cares crates, prayed with those affected by gender-based violence, and saw 300 people give their lives to Jesus. This reminds us of Jesus' parable about the Good Samaritan. When everyone looks the other way and abdicates responsibility, we're left with countless lives that are changed by the adverse effects of neglect, abuse, and trauma. Jesus himself took responsibility by dying on the cross for you and me, so that we can receive something that this world could never offer. Salvation, freedom, forgiveness, and peace. And now we get to give to our world what we have freely received. As a church, we've chosen to step into the gap and take up the fight, knowing that God can use us to bring kingdom culture to our country and turn South Africa into a testament of God's restoration and grace. Our church's initiatives and outreaches give everyone in this church many opportunities to make a difference and change the trajectory of our blessed land. We want to say thank you to every CRC member and volunteer for partnering with us as a church. 
We have many more outreaches planned for this campaign as we are committed to doing our part. We ask that you remain seated as the ushers prepare to wait on us for our tithes and offerings. Please note, the doors will remain locked for your security. God bless.
Amen. Amen. Before I bless you, just one important announcement. The Bible says in 2 Chronicles 7 verse 14 that if my people, that's each one of you, who are called by my name, shall humble up themselves, come and pray, seek my face, and turn from their wicked ways, I will hear from heaven, I will forgive their sins, and I will heal their land. We invite each one of you. We will be having a half night prayer the 12th of April, this coming Friday. Don't go and crash in the club. Go crash in God's presence because He will heal you. He will touch you. He will change your life. David said, what will keep me in time of trouble? My soul will keep me. A strong spirit will keep me in time of trouble. Nothing else. Allow me to bless you. Father, we thank you for your word this morning. We thank you that we heard that your grace is sufficient. We ask you today, I speak now, I speak your blessing, your favor. Many people stand before doors that were closed, but that very door that was closed will be opened because it's not a man that will open it, but it's God. Because if a man opens it, a man will close it. But when God opens it, no man will close it. I speak favor. I speak blessing. And Father, I thank you for your grace. Your grace, your grace over each and every one of them. In Jesus' name, amen. Hi there family, I'm Ange and I'm Sidi. We would just like to welcome you to CRC, which we know is definitely the place to be. Absolutely Ange. We are now in term two of 2024. We would like to encourage you to keep winning your world for Jesus. Pastor Ad has been teaching us in so many ways how to win the lost at any cost. Let's keep going. We are here to expand God's kingdom. I said we are here to expand God's kingdom. Our purpose is to expand God's kingdom. So we are not settlers, we are not campers, we are movers and we are shakers. We are here not to roll over, we are here to take over. Come on CRC. That's who we are. That's our DNA. We'll move and we'll get things moving wherever God has placed us.